Yeah. To what, I reply to what was it, reply to the argument that was made. Like specifically to what I said, because you keep on trying to isolate the solar system and take us back to 1600s when they thought the sun was in the center of the whole universe. You're like, we're just going to talk about the solar system. I promise it works there. And I point out it doesn't with Mercury, but even if we pretended it did, you cannot – listen, you cannot pull the solar system out and just isolate it because if that solar system model is true, in order for it to be true, it has to be flying through the galaxy. Do you understand that? Yes, and that makes things a little bit more complicated and harder to understand, and you're having a hard time enough to understand simple uh, uh, gravity. Oh, so let's mighty. Gas so let's mighty. Don't gaslight eye level. Go ahead, just stick, just make your argument. Don't gaslight because it's 98 weeks up here. And you know why, so go ahead. You cannot debunk the heliocentric model of the solar system with simple basic observations that we can make using a telescope throughout a year or two. You have, you have, yes, maybe if you look at the movement of Mercury throughout a, a century, you can see that, hey, this doesn't exactly match what I would predict would happen, and then you can come up with uh, more complicated explanations to it. But when we're talking about in the here and now, from day to day, over a year or two, the heliocentric model of the universe, of the solar system, explains the movement of the planets that we see, and it explains the timing of the different eclipses that we see. And of all of these, I try to explain the Selenarian. If you want, we can talk about it in private no, later. No, let's, just, let's, detail, let's wrap this up. I'm, I'm about to, I'm following that. Other people that. have other questions. Other no, no, people no, have no, other let, questions. Let me just let's summarize it so you can talk to whoever else. Let's summarize it. This is hilarious. Your point summarized is, you can pretend your model's true if we operate at an elementary level, keep it really, really simple, and exclude 99% of the observations and evidence that we know to exist and go back to the 1600s, then you can pretend your model's true. Okay, congratulations. Elementary school level, literally. Um it should be pointed out that any geostationary or flat Earth model also does not explain those observations that you're talking about. So uh, we're at the same level on those things as well. No, mine does because everything's magnetic. It just has a different magnetic field. It's not limited to proportionate mass. Thanks for playing. Oh, by the way, we can explain all of the motion in the universe because it's not limited to proportionate math. It would be varying magnetic field strength. You can't do that. That's why you need dark matter. You're not even close to competing with geocentrism. It's not, it's like laughably not even close. It's a blowout. Like we're subbing people in at this point. <laughs> Send me the details and I'll be happy to look in. Hey, I, got, I put some details for you in the Jumbotron. So one is a paper f titled, The Redshift Hypothesis for Quasars is the Earth the Center of the Universe. Basically what happened here is there was an observation of 57 quasars that was done over you know the course of X amount of years. And the, w the way that uh, it, they plotted out is that it would only be possible to view all 57 of them if Earth, if only if Earth is at the center of the universe. And then he goes on to give some various explanations for it, one of which is that they should abandon the Copernican principle in general relativity, et cetera, et cetera. And then more, and then on dark matter, I put the field equations for general relativity in there. You'll see a lambda G mu vu, or nu, sorry. And then uh, that's, the, that's the cold dark uh, matter model right there. So whenever they need to explain things on the larger scale structure of the universe, et cetera, et cetera, they'll just go ahead and flick that bad boy on and then there was one other thing oh yeah mutual exclusivity right so for stellar parallax that's a very compelling argument for um for heliocentrism especially when argued correctly but unfortunately like Witsa pointed out all of the observations are already plotted to the sun's ecliptic so from a geocentric position we could absorb that immediately with just an explanation so one of which would just be the sky rotates uh, every day so it rotates really fast that creates a drift another would be for now drag so there's just you know an ether wind and the, the sky is rotating and oh there's a little draggy drag so there, that's another explanation for the aberration that would be possible and then on top of that you would get into okay so what is the aberration observation anyway right it's a measurement it's a ratio when you ratio the angle against the speed of light you get 30 kilometers a second and everyone's like oh snap is dude is the earth in motion dog Ooh, that's a big big angle right there so 
but they all knew the difference between kinematics and dynamics, right? So they all knew that this was kinematics. This was motion. This was a measurement that cannot tell them if the sky is in motion or if the earth is in motion. So that's when your boy Airy came along and was like, hey, no worries, lads. I'll put water in my telescope. And if I needed to correct the angle, we'll know that the earth's in motion because the light will slow down when it um, enters the telescope. And if the earth is in motion, it'll require a further correction angle. And what they found is that they only had to correct the telescope by 0.8 eight arc seconds and their prediction was 30 arc seconds so 15 arc seconds over it's six months white. hold on one second dog I'm, I'm talking for a little bit like you're you're yeah, pretty much yeah one sec one second dog you can talk after Continue, you alan we'll yeah. pass the mic back to you uh Alan. yeah okay let's see oops okay here we go all right so let's see where were we at oh yeah aries failure so anyway, he puts the water in the telescope, doesn't have to make any correction angle in, in, that would correspond to the Earth being in motion. They didn't know quite what to do with that, so they call the experiment Aries failure, and they often tell people, oh, he failed to detect the old ether. But what the ether detection would be would be in the form of a velocity uh, that would be measured through the correction angle. So the failure of the velocity uh, is, the, is the failure, right? It's not a failure to detect the ether. That's not how that works. But it is nice framing shout out to the people who uh, run the marketing campaign over there at the royal society but anyway the real truth of the matter is if you want to know some real d uh, dark and deep dirty stuff dude go to wikipedia read about aries failure read about how they failed to detect the ether then download the 1887 mickelson morley paper read the first uh chapter <laughs> yeah sorry read the first paragraph he opens up by saying hey you know what's crazy that guy airy filled his water with telescope and the people that believe in the emission theory for light so the light's little ballistic projectiles have to believe that when the light enters the telescope it magically speeds up even though that's not a tenable possibility because that would violate the conservation laws for their interpretation of light so that's not even on the table and then he goes on to say hey for us undulatory lads right the wave lads shout out to the wave boys we would have to say that the ether that is supposed to be stationary in this experiment is somehow moving inside of the telescope and it's carrying the wave in the opposite direction of motion. And that's where he leaves it. No one's ever put a rebuttal to that. No one's ever said anything about it. And I doubt when you open up your mic, you're going to say anything meaningful on the subject. Go. Okay, let's go with uh, Aries failure. First of all, uh, from all the people that talked about it, no one was able to explain why uh, or what was the angle that he expected to see. I mean, what would count as a success in that situation? But that's not my point right now. My point is three arc seconds. It's, 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 it's in the, pa it's in the me, paper, me, 15 arc seconds for six months. Why are you being so triggered? Why are you being so triggered, guys? Come on, because, let me talk. Why are you talking over me? Because you're just lying, dog. Ah, so now when someone is lying, it's okay to talk over him. He's but giving you the value. Said, He's giving you the value. I, 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 I gave you hold the hold value. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I love what you said. He didn't give you a value, and he's, he's reinstating the, the the value that that was articulated. So now you got the value. So continue with your point. Yeah. I, again, Elon hit you with a double mute. You're right. You're right. <laughs> You're right, though. I do apologize for interrupting you. Please continue. Okay. Now, something pretty simple. What do you believe or what do you understand is causing light to slow down? I mean, uh, the whole uh, assumption of Aries failure basically was that the water in the telescope would slow down the light. Why is water slowing down the light? Refractive index changes the rate of yeah. induction density of the medium yes but why is causing it why is the what why is the density of the medium reducing the speed or the that light goes through it uh, Alex, okay i'll give my answer I'll rate. Give... propagation rate yeah i'll give my answer and then you can tell me if you agree with it or not the reason as i understand it is that what happens is that the atoms in the water are absorbing the light and then releasing the light this absorption and re uh, release is what is causing the slowing down of the light <clears throat> the more dense the material is the more atoms are absorbing the light and releasing it and that is causing uh, the light to slow down as it progresses through the material that is why the water would slow down the the speed of the, the speed that the light goes through it are we agreeing on this assumption no so electromagnetic Propagation has an oscillation rate 
of about uh, 300 million oscillations per second. When it's in a medium, it has a reduced rate, has a retarded rate. That's the explanation. Whatever you just said was a bunch of nonsense about the molecular structure of light or something bouncing back and forth. It makes no sense. It's incoherent. Absolutely. Um, release. Okay. When I was uh, hearing about this thing in physics class, the way that uh, I was explaining the thing that is causing light to bend and uh, separate in the prism is because that the material is absorbing the light and releasing it at different rates than uh, the air, and that is causing the change in angle and, uh, and the speed of the, the light in it. So, okay, we have other explanations. I don't exactly understand them, so I will take them into account for later, but let's continue with the way I uh, see it, and you can see if I'm wrong or not. But if the water is what is absorbing the light, then that means when it is releasing it, it's releasing it as the water is moving, or if the water is moving, it will release the, the light with the movement of the water. So if the Earth is the one that is moving, then when it is capturing the light from the stars, it will release it again as if it was uh, as in the, what is called, inertial frame of the, of the water, which is the Earth, which is moving. Therefore, may, may I if you, the observation you would make is as if uh, the Earth is stationary because the water is the one that is releasing the light as it moves through the telescope, as the light is moving through the telescope. Yes, may I? Uh, so, may, okay, so I'm going to steel man your position here. You're saying that the that the moving material media will change the propagation rate of C such that the correction angle will not need to be uh, provided because it's essentially making up the difference because it's being carried by the material medium at a one-to-one -one ratio? Pretty much, yes. Okay, so there's an there was an experiment called uh, Fresnel drag. So the it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. It's 88%, 48% 48 uh, 48 in the direction of motion and 48% against. You can apply that ratio, that Fresnel drag, to Aries failure, and you will not get 0 0.8 arc seconds. So that's it's still your position is completely untenable. We will not get the expected uh, observation that Aries was expected. So what you're saying is that this explains Aries failure. No, not at all. Your explanation requires a one-to-one -one ratio. It's actually a measured scientific fact, right? Or, well, you know, there's scientific evidence to support that it's an 88% ratio. So you would have way more of a correction angle than 0 0.8 arc seconds. Experimentation, Again, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you have experimentation that goes directly against what you're proposing as the explanation, because you would still have to correct it, even if you were going to go with that. And it would be carried in the opposite direction of the motion, which is, again, like, you know, it, like that's embarrassing, right? Like, if you tilt the telescope in the opposite direction, then you would actually, you know, maybe have a, I don't know, like, you, it's, dude, it still wouldn't even be viable, dog, because then you'd be going in the opposite direction when you're supposed to be chasing the sun. So it still doesn't work out for you. It's a complete refutation to the model. Okay, let's, like I said, I don't exactly understand the reason uh, Eri was expecting what he was expecting, but I'm not a scientist and I'm not an expert in that uh, thing. I, I think none of us are really experts in this field and none of us could calculate uh, what he is expected to see yeah so, so it, it's fairly it's fairly simple so one degree of arc per degree or per kilometer a second for the heliocentric model so if the earth is moving at 30 kilometers a second they're going to have to correct the telescope by 30 arc seconds over the course of, of the year so it's a pretty simple ratio that they derived and again um you know you don't have to be a, a scientist to interpret a telescope in water, my man. So you can actually download the PDF of the paper yourself online for free, and I can get the links for you yourself, and you could read it and decipher uh, what happened for yourself and make up your own mind because 
you know, they're not going to yeah. tell you this. They're not going to explain this. Like as you're trying to do right now, you're quickly finding out that just some random guy on the internet happens to like dismantle your entire position because it's just based on nonsense. You like, did not and, and, dismantle, and, but uh, send it over, and I'll be happy to read it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's talk about something. Let's talk about something else. Another very interesting observation Actually, that I uh, uh, we're gonna, remember. We're, so, hey, we're, if, if okay, you have any, if you have if you have any closing thoughts, okay. We're, we're yeah, something wrap, something really nice. Uh, yeah, yeah let, let's wrap up and then we're gonna uh, pick. We're gonna change okay. mics to Lily Hanna or somebody else and we'll, and we'll get back okay. to you um, okay well basically what i want to talk about is uh the orbits of the moon around i think it's jupiter no, and that's the that opposite of what he asked for he asked for closing okay, thoughts so, yeah, okay, okay. So never mind never mind another time yeah 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 we could definitely come back my, to the closing, kinematics my closing on that though, is, but okay, right okay. My, closing point, my closing point is that the heliocentric model of the solar system is in line with what we observe and you can equate it to because it was reverse engineering from observation. I'm happy with that uh, explanation of it. Uh, if you have other explanations uh, of how things work, I'll be happy to see them, um, but it does not debunk the heliocentric model that explains how things are moving. Thank you. Thank you for your time, sir. Liliana, what's up, girl? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, guys. Hey, panel.